successful year. Uh, this year we have um, Yoav, Dr. Yoav Lahan, who is joining us as a new faculty member. Um, he's a, phys a physical oceanographer dealing a lot with remote sensing. He'll be giving the school seminar in about a month's time. All of you are encouraged to come, and I think you also have to come. So you'll, you'll be hearing a little more about him, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Regina for being responsible for the departmental seminars during the last few years, and she's passed the responsibility on to Yoav, and uh, that's it, I just wanna wish you all a very successful year. Thanks, Heiken. I'll, I'll start by saying that, uh, you know, I think this is an obligatory uh, participation for the students, so I will pass uh, this seminar, beginning of this seminar, a page, this one is, uh, to, uh, what's his name? If someone cannot come, uh, please update me and, and we'll see how, how to handle it. Um, <coughs> questions about the seminar and participation? Okay, so I'm very happy to introduce our lecturer today, Dr. Kirill Gerke. He graduated uh, from Moscow Institute, of Moscow mm -hmm. Institute of uh, Physics and Technology. And in 2009, he, uh, he his graduate his postdoc from uh, his doc his PhD from Kyoto University, and uh, now he's working with Regina here in our department, and he's doing. Uh, he will talk, tell us about his work on uh, four scale physics and modeling. Uh, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much for introduction. Um, I'll try to be pretty general. So I removed all formulas and all kind of these mathematical things from my uh, presentation today. So I'll just try to tell you not how I do things, but mainly why and what can be done and well, just a little bit of how. So uh, basically what I'm trying to do is to predict the uh, physical properties of different porous media, for example, stones, sandstones, uh, everything you find, sediments on the uh, seabed floor, uh, and just to study its structure and then predict its properties based on those structure information. Everything I will tell you about is uh, I can't claim it to be my own work. So I work with plenty of different people and there are people I work really kind of in a constant collaboration and there are people um, just collaborate on some kind of smaller projects and those all the people I have published together with or about to publish in very nearest future. Um, so what's the main idea of what I'm trying to do? Uh, imagine that we, ha we know the structure of any porous media, let's say, for example, rock, and there will be different, let's say, uh, pore inclusions, so the structure of pore and the characteristic uh, length of these structures will be some uh, small l, and if this small l is much less than the size of this thing, that volume we are studying, then we can take any physical property and say, okay, this volume, uh, we don't care what is the structure of those things, but we have a kind of effective property, physical property for this volume. And this is the... Uh, the main thing that you are supposed to do to come from kind of mechanistic physical or mechanical description of the complex system in order to put some properties into um, so-called continuum scale models. So uh, continuum scale models are good for solving really big problems using kind of conventional differential equation approach, but in order to do that, you need the parameters of your model and those effective properties that are kind of upscaled from microscale into continuum scale are necessary to, to 
uh, apply those models for real problems. Uh, so basically, uh, everything I'm trying to do is this transition from uh, known structural information to effective properties and a little bit beyond that. Uh, there are, just to give an example, how there are plenty of different physical properties that uh, uh, you can study for a given porous media. Uh, electrical, thermal, diffusion, elastic modeling, but I usually mainly uh, focus on, on flow and transport properties that are more interested to the topic I'm usually dealing with and I'm usually dealing with oil and gas stuff. So uh, that's my major topic, but sometimes I go around as well. And uh, this effective kind of continuum media uh, uh, idea is that if you know the effective property and you know the uh, average flux over the volume and kind of intensity or some gradient, then you can compute the flow of uh, thermal energy, electrical current, uh, the diffusion rate, and many other things. And in case of permeability, you just compute the permeability. Uh, so there are plenty of different laboratory methods of how you can study pore space and how you can describe it based on this uh, different methodologies. So what is obvious from this kind of general scheme is that depending on the method, you can always, you're always limited to some range of pore sizes that you can study with this given method. Uh, basically, there is no perfect method for uh, obtaining really kind of uh, full explicit data about the structure of the pore, but uh, technically we can divide all of the methods into two large groups. One is imaging and another is kind of deducing methods. So imaging methods include uh, tomography, usually it's um, x-ray computed tomography or for example, scanning electron microscopy, thin sections, and such. And kind of deducing methods are based on measuring uh, capillary curve. I'll show you how it looks. And uh, it's based on intrusion of the mercury, for example, in mercury perosimetry, intrusion of the mercury inside the pores, or for any other fluid like for example, water and depending on the area like hydrology or oil and gas, people are using slightly different methods, but the idea is the same everywhere. So if you measure this kind of capillary curve and using so-called very simplistic uh, capillary tube model, then you represent the porous media as a bun, uh, bundle of capillary tubes and using young laplace equation you kind of from this measured value uh, you go into something that is they call pore size distribution or fruit size distribution and uh, this is kind of conventional way uh, very old and conventional and still pretty much used way to, to deduce the structure of the porous media, but it has a lot of problems. So even if you kind of deduce this pore size distribution from, from indirect measurements, that's why I call them semi-integral characteristics, because kind of they are coming from uh, solving the inverse integral problem, and this problem basically has a multitude of, of uh, correct solutions, so you never know how good is your solution. Uh, so you can create a number of the kind of porous media structures based on this pore size distribution, and all of them are going to have different physical flow and transport properties. So those conventional 
approach are simply not working, but they are still used abundantly. So uh, probably the best way of studying the structure of the porous media, and especially it's good to study it in 3D, will be direct imaging. So what you can do is that you take, for example, a cylinder, cylindrical sample of the um, rock, and then you put it into a microtomography device and you obtain the map three dimensional map of attenuation coefficients so how good this particular part within a uh, sample uh, how it absorbs the x-ray radiation and in the end you kind of obtain uh, the image uh, grayscale image that represents uh, represents those uh, attenuation coefficients and then if you for example binarize it and or segment out the pores so you divide the uh, three-dimensional space into basically pores and solids and here is the three-dimensional representation of pores then you can use for example this uh, three-dimensional structure of the pore space uh, to solve, let's say, a uh, Stokes equation where you apply a known pressure gradient, you solve for pressure and then you solve for uh, fluid flow velocity within the pore space, then you average this thing, you get the permeability that uh, is an, an effective property we were talking about. And compared to conventional laboratory methods, uh, such approach is based on the um, imaging and then modeling. They have a whole bunch of kind of advantages, uh, uh, which I won't go too much into detail, but the main things are that you are not destroying your sample. You can model as many things on, on your three-dimensional structure as you want in any number of directions with, I don't know, flow with... Uh, chemical reaction then if you don't like what you get you go back to initial structure and remodel things do as many things as you want but you still have your kind of uh, sample but if you do it experimentally your sample is destroyed uh, you probably can't see too much on these figures but I will try to explain so basically uh, my work in this area started from uh, simulating flow, this obtaining the permeability values from uh, uh, microtomography imaging results as one we have seen on the previous slide. And we started from uh, kind of uh, comparing what we get from the uh, uh, this type of pore scale modeling and what we observe from laboratory measurements. And here we have uh, one um, graph is uh, uh, about results for porosity. So here you have laboratory porosity and here you have the porosity you observe on, on uh, tomography image. Uh, and here are three uh, graphs for lo uh, laboratory measurements against simulations for three different uh, types of simulating uh, flow. Um, and what we see is generally that the trend for different, regardless of the method you use, the trend is pretty good and you can predict it in case then you see really the main structure of the pores. And why in many cases we under predict the porosity values and the reason for that first uh, the measurements are done on a really big kind of images so these are the plaques of about this size and diameter of four centimeters and we make our simulations on about this size so couple of millimeters width cubes 
And the second biggest uh, problem is that all imaging methods, including X-ray microtomography, has a resolution limit. So basically, there is a size of this pixel or voxel you can observe. And if there is a pore that is smaller than the resolution of your imaging device, you won't see it. And depending on the pore size distribution within the rock, you either see majority of pore or you see the minority of pore. And if you see the large main pores within the sample, you can predict its probability very nicely. If you don't see all of them, the, the all major flow paths, then your predictions are not good. And in order to verify this idea, then here is the uh, plot for measured and observed porosity but kind of the porosity that is uh, filled the fluid up to a capillary pressure that is representative for the um, for the uh, resolution of the tomography device that was used to image those samples so basically we closed everything that we don't see on the tomography device and then check if this is going to improve the porosity match that we see and we measure. And we did improve it and to some extent that covers the second part, the se part of the uh, uh, imaging resolution, but it's not covering the first part. Um, which is the difference in sizes, the size where we make measurements and where we perform our m uh, digital modeling and imaging. And the problem why we can't go to the huge size of, uh, of the conventional kind of uh, laboratory models is that there is a problem with all imaging methods. It's like if you want to uh, study the larger sample, then uh, if you want to study the larger sample, uh, your resolution will be lower and vice versa. So if you want to have a really good resolution, then your sample has to be really small. And so either your sample is representative or you get really, really good quality of your image. And uh, you can't make measurements on a very small sample because of uh, um, laboratory issues. Uh, mainly it's about the pressure gradient, for example, that you won't be able to create or measure and about the boundary effects and things like this. So it's not possible. So the only way we can go is that we have to increase the volume of our simulations and try to go up to a laboratory scale. Um, so the major challenges that uh, I was trying to cover or trying to work on right now include how we can improve the image processing because this is a very important step. That's how you move from this grayscale, for example, images into a binary image representing two phases like pores and solid materials. Um, how to overcome this imaging problem, which is has always have a trade-off between the size of the sample you study and the resolution, yeah, how big your pixels or voxels on the image are, and how to make these simulations fast and robust, because making simulations even on this small uh, volumes of the three-dimensional pore space usually requires a lot of uh, computational power. And uh, also an important question, so how you uh, input the data you kind of simulate on a very small volumes of the pore space, how you can try to incorporate them into the main kind of aim of all flow in transport simulation, that's the scale of the oil and gas field. Because in uh, oil and gas field models, uh, you have kind of cells with some effective properties. And the size of these cells is usually 
up to 200 by 200 by 200 meters so that's a really huge thing and obviously if you will take samples from such a big mass of rock they are all going to be very different and properties of these rocks are going to be very different and if you just take it from by one particular kind of point m make some measurements either in the lab or using pore scale modeling the results are not going to be representative for the whole block so this is the problem uh, which is known as an uh, upscaling problem so how you can go from the smaller scale into the larger scale and keep your predictions okay um, so this segmentation problem or or phase separation on grayscale images is very important because it will affect the results of your simulation uh, generally there is a so-called grayscale histogram uh, based on the image you obtain with different images imaging techniques and usually you can see well just in this sometimes you can see many peaks but let's say you see one huge peak and another not really distinctive peak and this peak uh, is generally for pores and the rest is for different solid materials the rock contains from uh, and the main idea is to try to divide it into kind of uh, into pores and solids and in all time in the beginning of all the image and things we just uh, manually put the threshold and said okay so let's divide the all pixels or voxels on the image so we put the threshold here and everything uh, on the left side is poor and everything on the right side is some kind of uh, solid material but uh, those kind of approaches are not working very well and there are now pl plenty of different more advanced uh, ways to do that but uh, you can describe all modern approaches more or less in a way like you put the confidence bounds uh, on every uh, histogram so you say I'm sure that below this value I have this face and above this particular value uh, I have the other face but in between I'm not sure and I will use different statistical other 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 methods in order to ca categorize those kind of pixels or voxels in between those confidence bounds and put them in either being uh, so they are made of phase one or phase two and um, do, uh, by doing this you can uh, even uh, create multi-phase uh, segmentation and here uh, some white represents solid uh, um, um, black represents pores and and yellow represents uh, the porosity which is below the resolution of the uh, uh, tomography device that was used to image tho those uh, rock plugs um, uh, and using this information for example for this carbonate rock if you image it with with a CT device and then you will uh, take a look at the pores in three dimension in three dimensions they are not even connected so they are not uh, so basically the pore space is not from this side to this side or any other side is not percolating there is no pathway to go from here to here so uh, from flow and transport point of view this rock has no permeability there is no way the fluid can go through such a rock but uh, based on laboratory measurements we know that this um, rock is permeable so it has pretty decent permeability so there should be waves and if we look in this grayscale kind of values we will see that this rock contains a lot of kind of porosity below the res imaging resolution that is well connected within this sample and if you 
would be able to image that and incorporate it into your model you would be able to predict the properties correctly there are Uh, yes, but you can't do that with the given device. It's a physical thing. So if you will take, for example, a small piece of the yellow structure and put it into the device and make it uh, the, um, make the imaging with a better resolution, you will see the pores. Or another way to solve this problem, I will talk about how to solve this problem in a couple of slides, is for example, you can use other bet uh, better resolution imaging methods, but they are, for example, only 2D, like uh, making a uh, scanning electron microscopy study of the structure, and then you can improve your images by kind of fusing multi-scale images, putting all the data you have from different scale into a single image with predefined resolution. Uh, a lot of work have b has been done but, uh, by our group about uh, how to segment images. We have shown that many previously um, believed uh, methods that have worked good uh, or usually used methods are not actually that nice and then we proposed some different methods and finally we have running a kind of international uh, comparative survey project so that some people provided a lot of samples and uh, we created a pool of different methods and a pool of uh, kind of um, experts in this area which are um, known for their publications on, on solving this problem. And then those samples are distributed to these different expert teams. They provide their solution of the segmentation problem. And then based on four scale modeling, we model the flow and then compare it against the laboratory uh, measurements. We can kind of uh, uh, assess the accuracy of each uh, expert team and based on on this study which is almost finished I can tell you that we actually not doing this part of the image processing uh, nice we are doing it with a lot of mistakes and the results I basically will mainly depend not on the kind of algorithm or or the methodology you will use, but mainly it will depend on the person who will define the parameters of this algorithm. So that's kind of an interesting um, conclusion. And the problem with all imaging things is that you don't have the true image that you can use as a uh, standard or ideal structure. And the reason is that because e each pixel or voxel on your image represents some kind of integral volume that can contain a lot of different mixture of materials. And what you can see on the grayscale images is just attenuation coefficient. How good the uh, uh, this given sub-volume of your sample is absorbing X-ray radiation. And it depends on the energy of X-ray radiation, density of the material, and atomic number of the constituents within these sub-volumes. So there is no way to solve uh, the problem and say where exactly within this sub-volume some different borders between materials allocated. It's not possible. So you see only some kind of uh, volume integral representation. Uh, so that also uh, uh, just the question that you have asked. So what do you do with these particular uh, structures that you can see that they definitely are kind of uh, have pore sizes spanning different scales and in geology uh, it's very well known because you have like a 
different field scale, heterogeneities, uh, beddings, and uh, all of these substructures, they have their own kind of structure and genesis. And based on that, for example, pores on different scales will have different uh, uh, kind of structure parameters and they will look and connect differently. So how you can, if you study those structures on different scale, you can actually put them together in order to create a free 2D or three dimensional structure that will incorporate all of those, um, all of those, inf uh, all the information you obtain from different scale. Here is another for, uh, example of a complex three dimensional structure of the shales uh, from S Siberia in Russia, Bajenov Formation Shales, that is believed to contain huge amount of oil, but it's really hard to get it out of there. And unless you really study the structure that is kind of strongly complex and hierarchical, and there are different domains within domains of different pore structures, and you model how you can kind of extract the oil from there, you won't move forward because if you just make your, uh, drill your oil well in one of 10 of uh, wells, you get some inflow of the oil and 90% uh, of your wells producing basically nothing. Uh, so how do we solve the problem of uh, merging different scales? So we use some statistical descriptors for uh, s for the structure of the porous media and basically the idea is that imagine that you take a, a, a line segment of the different length and throw it into the structure and now you compute the probability that for example uh, two the ends of your line segment are lying within the same phase or the whole line segment lying within some given phase and uh, or two ends of the line segment are lying within the same cluster of the given phase and now by changing the length of this segment and throwing into the structure or even throwing it with some predefined direction, you can compute something that is called correlation function. So basically it's probability of the event against the length of your segment. Now, when you computed it based on a given image, theoretically what you can do is that you can rescale, you can coarsen or make a finer resolution of the uh, kind of statistical information on that structure you have. So you can manipulate uh, manipulate the length scales based on this idea and then if you uh, create the statistical representations based on this um, um, uh, statistical measures okay. so you obtain the real image for a given uh, scale and then you uh, produce kind of free scaled uh, uh, statistical representation and then kind of fuse them, merge them together into a single image. Basically what you produce is one single image with predefined resolution, which you manipulated by rescaling the correlation function, which incorporates the data from all the scales that were available to you. There are current shortcomings with this technology and uh, mm, not everything works perfect, but we are working to improving and solving all major problems to that. And uh, I said that f based on uh, uh, rescaled correlation functions, we statistically recreate uh, the structure. So it's, uh, it's so-called uh, stochastic reconstruction. So imagine that uh, you have an image, then you compute it some um, this so-called correlation functions. Now you create a random structure and then you start to permutate the pixels or voxels within those things and uh, 
at each uh, kind of after each permutation you check if your permutation is improving the difference between the target correlation function and the correlation functions you have at the moment for this given structure and uh, based on the annealing sh schedule basically uh, you try to accept mainly the permutations that improve the difference uh, between target and current set of correlation functions and you end up with with a structure that has exactly the same kind of statistical representation the question of how good it represents the original structure is kind of complicated there are different caveats with that but um, uh, but uh, all of those problems are potentially solvable but in practice everything depends on the particular structure at the moment so there are structures that we can uh, stochastically reconstruct without any problem and there are structures that we at the moment we can't uh, all the reconstructions we do are not actually that nice uh, but at least we can say before any um, any attempt to reconstruct we can say okay it will work for that or and oh okay for that it's probably not going to work that nice so here is the example of the uh, statistical fusion of multi-scale images for a carbonate sample remember we were talking about the one there the, the pores are not connected the ones we see on the x-ray tomography 3d image but we know that it has permeability and if we study the sample we are uh, using the scanning electron microscopy and see pores with much better resolution then we rescale the structure we incorporate the structure into the x-ray microtomography data then uh, we will see that the original uh, coarse resolution structure had the porosity of 6.7% and there was no permeability because it was not connected the uh, SEM based uh, uh, image had the um, almost 15 percent of uh, um, porosity and if we compute the permeability of the reconstruction it was pretty low close to four milli darcy's that's just the units of uh, permeability but it's relatively low value and now if you put everything together we get porosity of about uh, 20 and permeability that is pretty close to the measured value also if we compute uh, the simulate the capillary curve or two-phase flow rel so-called relative permeability relative permeability is you won't see it here but based so imagine that uh, we have a porous sample and there are two fluids flowing from this sample one is air and another is water and now let's say that we have a uh, saturation of water that's how much water is currently within the sample and let's say that uh, the current saturation is 50 percent so there is 50 percent of air and 50 percent of water within the sample this is quite usually what happens with uh, oil and gas hydrology and other applications because in soils for example the water is flowing together with air and in oil and gas applications uh, we use water to uh, remove the oil from pore space so we have water oil and usually actually gas oil and water flowing simultaneously within the porous media and if we have uh, for each given saturation of water uh, we have a fraction of the total permeability when only one fluid is flowing through a given porous media uh, for each uh, fluid so here it's for uh, oil uh, water and oil and they depend on on uh, many factors including interfacial tension between the fluid uh, rock structure the vitability of the structure this is kind of well 
uh, beyond the topic of my presentation today but if you are doing anything like this or interested you can always ask me about that and there is another huge project that we are leading at the moment with more than 60 international participants taking part in that is um, so we created a library of 3D images and then distributed some part of the structural information so that people would create their this stochastic reconstruction and then we gather the uh, data back from from uh, kind of experts again in this field and then compute a lot of different metrics uh, and comparing the original structure against stochastic reconstruction we can kind of um, evaluate the accuracy of each given methodology and and team of experts and uh, reliably say if their uh, attempt was successful or not and the results are well they are good and bad so basically uh, we for complex real structures that we observed in rocks uh, in real rocks uh, the accuracy is quite low we can hit let's say 100 percent accuracy with any methodology we have at the moment which is something below that what we have expected but on the other hand we saw that the, the, the new kind of idea arise from these studies that there are some different methods that are stronger in something so they really represent good this particular kind of feature of the structure and now if you kind of combine different methods all together into one like hybrid methodology then your results are going to be really really nice and so um, it, it was also not that bad oops sorry i forgot to translate this part so uh we are coming to third and basically almost final part of uh, my presentation for today and so how to make uh uh flow and transport modeling based on the structure information fast and reliable uh, there are plenty of different methodologies to to solve for example navier stokes equation which is kind of up to date representation of the physics and mechanics of the multi-phase flow we understand on the poor scale so but the problem with that is you if you really solve it uh, directly then you will require so in the, this work people mentioned that they require to week on 1000 cores on a supercomputer for a really 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 small volume of the pore space so it's not practical you can you can do that for research but then it comes to kind of uh, creating a lot of results for a given rock structure formation or solving real uh, application problems those kind of methodologies are not practical they are impossible to be used to apply to real problems so the only way uh, but i don't i i'm not trying to say that direct methods we don't need them that's not true so we have to use some simple simplified algorithms that are working very fast but we have to parameterize them using direct methods to make sure that our simplified representation is really covering the reality that that happens during flow within porous formations so uh, i am an adept of so-called poor network models that kind of simplify the structure of the three-dimensional pore space into kind of poor bodies and poor throats poor bodies are like volumes and poor throats are like connections between those volumes uh, so in this architecture of kind of simplified pore space you can 
simulate flow really fast and in an effective way and there are many different aspects of the extraction of these uh, poor, poor network models from three-dimensional images which is kind of a bit complicated and takes time but after you do that you can simulate things very fast and what we actually kind of how we improved those kind of models is that uh, we proposed a completely new way to parameterize those models based on direct numerical simulations and based on uh, 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 artificial intelligent machine learning approaches. So we solve some, la, let's say, hydraulic conductances of the poor elements. We solve them directly and then we predict this value uh, um, um, we predict hydraulic conductance b based on the shape from uh, neural network, uh, trained neural network, and here is the kind of the cloud of data of direct simulations. There are different model existing which are not capturing the reality, none of them, but uh, so our solution was able to reproduce direct simulations with uh, pretty low error and by doing that we now can perform really fast simulation in those poor network models uh, with not that much kind of um, computational effort. Uh, also we are working on multi-scale poor networks because as we talked there are different kind of uh, there are poor structures that are existing on many different scales and if you really recreate each pore and then put it into the pore scale uh, model then you have trillions of pore elements and even for the pet pore network model which is computationally efficient simulating that much of elements will be prohibitive. So what we can we do? We create, for example, on the finest scale, we from SEM images, we create three-dimensional uh, structures. Then we compute, let's say, permeability or relative permeabilities based on this structure. And then uh, those properties we substitute in just a single uh, element of the poor network of the next larger scale. Uh, so in the next larger scale we have, let's say like a here everything was nanoscale from uh, scanning electron microscopy and here is a core scale uh, X-ray tomography study. We see some porosity then uh, we can uh, extract kind of the structure of the invisible porosity then we put them together and we make simulations so uh, based on direct and kind of continuum scale stuff all together into one kind of poor network model also we are trying to parameterize the properties of these elements based on, on percolation theory approach um, in order to, to try uh, those multi-scale modeling approaches, we of course need a lot of real data. So uh, we also obtain a lot of different data sets for different porous media structures on different scales. Try to put them together for future multi-scale poor network modeling and comparison between modeled results with the results that we measure in the laboratory because otherwise there is no any other way to to uh, assess the accuracy of this uh, stochastic multi-scale fusion techniques and the final thing just a couple more slides um, um, how how big those models, where should we stop? I mean, okay, we go from tiny na nanoscale uh, image, we create small elements with some kind of known properties, we put it into 
micron scale and from micron scale we go let's say up to centimeter so up to what scale we should go in order to uh, mm, where should we stop and then go to continuum scale model this is a really good question I still don't have a good answer for that so basically that's what we do on the poor scale and that's how the results of the simulation on the continuum scale look like uh, when we solve not really the flow in each pore but we kind of solve the flow in the continuum already continuum scale uh, representation uh, there are no pores in those things we just have the kind of porosity values we have permeability values relative permeability things like that and this then we solve the flow using this type of things and uh, we are playing with these models and the main idea for now what we've got is that well uh, first I don't really have an answer for where should we at what scale we should stop with uh, poor scale approach I still don't know that and we are thinking about this and the second the best way to kind of move from uh, one scale into the other is to dynamically couple those different models so it's kind of like you solve Darcyan scale large scale continuum scale flow and then uh, based on this kind of you solve one time step in this model then you give to a poor scale model current uh, boundary condition let, let's say like um, uh, pressure gradients and then you solve the effective properties based on these boundary conditions on the poor scale and then you throw up to the uh, larger scale those effective properties then the next time scale is re computed with these effective properties that you got from a smaller model then you at some point after in your large model you then again throw back uh, change boundary conditions and recompute the effective properties and uh, we are kind of working on making the prototype for this kind of model and I would expect that the results of this type of modeling would be completely different from the conventional kind of static type of effective properties that we have in the porous media we have plenty of publications you can uh, Google me and see what I have on uh, my Google Scholar profile and just very shortly about my plans to what I'm planning to do during my stay at Haifa University um, uh, first one is the comparison of uh, poor scale modeling based on voxel based and meshing type of approaches so how those are how they are different uh, in their accuracy how do they work what's the different uh, difference in computational power needed and things like this and the second one if we have a uh, poor uh, let's say poor structure for a given rock then we can compute uh, those statistical descriptors like correlation functions and then uh, the question is can we use the artificial intelligence techniques in order to predict the uh, complex uh, flow properties that's really hard to simulate or measure based only on uh, structural descriptors and that's all for today if you have any questions I would be very happy to answer them I guess here? No. No. no? Yes, here. Mm -hmm. So 
Do you actually, I didn't understand it, you can actually go from the nanoscale to the macroscale? Can we do any extrapolation or? Uh, yes, but uh, the extrapolation is only as good as your input data are. So imagine, uh, here are just the example kind of, of uh, it's more, how to say, a general scheme of the idea and examples what can be this input data. Uh, but for the really sim, uh, not they are not sim that simple anymore. The examples I had, so you have really uh, fine resolution two-dimensional images that are coming from scanning electron microscopy. So you see really small po uh, small pores on the kind of not that large image, and then you have physically much larger volume you see on the tomography, but the resolution is much more coarse. And now the idea is that based on the every information you have on those two images you create as good as you can the representation with a predefined resolution that captures the structure of both kind of images and you can do it uh, with many images of many different resolution uh, multiple images coming from the same resolution so imagine you have a rock and well you have different kind of this under resolution on invisible porosity in this part of rock is kind of different from this part of rock and if you have the images uh, that provide you this information you can potentially kind of incorporate that so uh, you decide the complexity of the model and you decide uh, and the quality is decided by the input data but now it's a kind of it's an emergent technique. It's not something that you have already a good solution. So you pick your images, click one button, and you got the results. No, it's not like this yet. So we really first you see it, you decide where, what, and how will be merged. You subcrop the different parts. You make stochastic reconstruction, rescaling of the correlation functions. And finally, at some point, you get your kind of fused model. Uh, I hope I answered your question to some extent. Uh, uh, yes, please. Can you, pl uh, no? Can you please uh, comment on uh, the topics of uh, soft sediment? Because most of the examples that you've given were hard rock sediment. And about uh, multi phase uh, issues. Mm. You have water, oil, uh, or gas. As or uh, first, uh, uh, for the first part of your question, I, I can give very general answer, but for the second part, I would like to you to be a bit more specific. What do you want to hear? Because I'm not sure what's your question. Uh, you talk, for example, about segmentation of the of mm. the pore space uh, mm. versus the solid. Uh, but when you have a multi-phase, you have water, gas, and sediment. That's another another ball game of segmentation. Mm. Uh, oh, okay, so now I see your compl added complexity to okay. that. Or mm -hmm. oil, water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think now I've got what you were trying to ask. So the first question about the soft kind of matter, soft sediments or many other things that are called soft matter, uh, there are specifics to imaging those kind of things because if the density is of the material is very low and you put it into the, for example, tomography device, you will see everything is pretty there will be kind of everything will be pretty black and you won't be able to kind of see any particular structure in there but there are many ways how people try to solve this problem for example if you have an organic material that you due to its low density you won't see on the image they put some contrast uh, uh, 
substances that are kind of um, adsorbed preferentially to the organic material and then they see it much better on the image. The same is for imaging multiple fluids within the rocks. So for example, if you want to air, well, usually you see it in much better uh, compared that, for example, if you have oil and water and air, you see the last one pretty nicely. But for example, if you have a problem between discerning one fluid and the other fluid, let's say water and oil, you can again add some iodine chloride, for example, into the water and it will be really looking bright on the on your tomography images because uh, iodine chloride will really absorb a lot of x-rays so you will see where your fluid is that's another approach there are plenty of things they do uh, if I remember correctly with argon gas so you can see the argon gas pretty nicely within uh, the sample with the um, x-ray tomography for example and there are other gases that they put for example in this invisible porosity so there are pores that are below the resolution but you kind of highlight them on the image by injecting some particular gas or fluid into this volume so there are different tricks and if you go in depth of imaging this is a separate science that you can do a lot of things uh, on that but I can't say that I'm really interested in those kind of things because my major is actually modeling and I only solve the problem of uh, preparing the imaging for modeling so in this sense I'm interested in image analysis but then it 